This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics. We promise to do our best to keep it both insightful, but brief. In this episode, we have Greg Castro, VP, Global Partnerships at Mob Vista. Greg, welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming, Greg. Uh, let me set the stage first. So uh, we carry this small rectangular, rectangular computer in our pocket or a purse. One moment we complain about how we would like to use it less and wonder how the world spent before the smartphone the next we're relieved that it is in hand, pun intended, to help us figure out so many things. We have a bunch of apps on it, and sure thing, we see a bunch of ads in those uh, in apps and mobile websites. And you know what? Some of those ads don't quite look like ads. These peculiar species are playable ads, and Greg will tell us about more so we can know them better and use for your business. But before doing that, uh, Greg, let's kick off with talking about you. Please tell us about your background. Sure thing. Uh, I've been in the tech industry for over 20 years. Uh, I usually like to split up my background into the first half of my career uh, and the second half of my career. First half of my career, uh, I started at a voice over IP startup that got acquired by Yahoo. And while at Yahoo, I helped build out customer care initiatives for the Yahoo communications products. Uh, and then transferred into traditional business development. Uh, I then moved over to AOL, where I helped AOL build out customer care for their free user base, um, considering that at that time, they were only offering customer care for their paid users. And that then transitions into the second half of my career, which is where the relevance is today. I really wanted to either get into mobile or get into digital advertising. And I really hit the jackpot with both when I landed a role at Amobi where I helped uh, manage the publisher business. Amobi was a full exchange programmatic platform business. Um, and that's where I really got my chops originally uh, in digital advertising. And since then, I've actually worked at multiple SaaS platform companies. Most recently, prior to Mob Vista, I worked at a company by the name of Seltra, a creative management platform uh, where we offered that to both publishers as well as programmatic companies. Fast forward to now, I am now at Mob Vista, where I am managing a partnerships team. And what does that mean? That means managing tech partnerships, such as the likes of an Amazon, a Google, a Facebook. It could be the mobile measurement partners, such as an Adjust, an Apps Flyer, or Tengen. But it is also this team that is building out and implementing the go-to-market strategy for all of our SaaS platforms. Wow, that's really impressive. Um, Yahoo. You're the first person on this show who worked at Yahoo back then. And it does remind me of those days when I uh, used to be a CEO guy. Yeah, about 20 years ago, um, when Yahoo really was one of the pillars of the internet, people are not only searching for stuff via search engine, they were looking for stuff in directories. In Yahoo was the number one. Now it feels so irrelevant in the world of TikTok and, gener and generative AI. It's just uh, from the <laughs> previous century, previous year, but it wasn't that long ago. It's just time runs so fast in tech. Tell me about, tell me about my Vista or what you guys do. Sure thing. I could actually act, answer that at both the, uh, the macro and micro level. So at my Vista, we've really established ourselves as a comprehensive hub, growth hub for app developers by really offering an integrated ecosystem that unites both ad tech and MarTech solutions. So we were born in Asia, but we've really flourished worldwide. We've always aimed to bridge the East and West through our deep advertising expertise. And this kind of quote unquote, be the bridge mission really serves as the foundation of our approach. While our vision has expanded to empower developers with tools for robust and sustainable growth, at every stage of the, their journey. Now for the past decade, we have passionately crafted solutions for user acquisition, monetization, creative production, 
campaign automation and optimization, and analytics. And all of this is really possible through the sub-brands, which serve our customers no matter where they're need. And so now we're kind of going to get into like the micro level of what, what does all that mean? So think of Mob Vista as an umbrella company, similar to where Meta is the umbrella company for Facebook and Instagram. Alphabet is the umbrella company for Google. Mob Vista is the umbrella company for all of the sub-brands that help app developers. And I could speak to those sub-brands through the actual journey of an app developer. As an app developer is getting started, they want to know more about how users are utilizing their app. In steps game analytics. Game analytics, the best way to think about them is Google Analytics, but for games. It really helps app developers understand how users are utilizing the app. That can be for in-app advertising, that can be for in-app purchases, but it could also be understanding how users are, are understanding the designs, how they're moving from, from one level of the game to the next. Next, as an app developer is getting larger, they want to start monetizing their app. In steps Mintegral, which is our full programmatic exchange. And we have both direct demand and tons of third-party demand via DSPs connected to the Mintegral, Mintegral exchange to help monetize that app developer's inventory. Then as an app developer wants to, to get larger, they take some of the profits from this monetization and they start to use that profit for user acquisition. And we can help app developers with user acquisition through Mintegral as well, because we're both the, su the supply side and the demand side. But we can help with user acquisition beyond just Mintegral. Uh, we have an in-house media agency by the name of NativeX. And NativeX helps app developers acquire users through the major media platforms like a Facebook, a Google, a TikTok, or the other SDK ad networks like an app loving, a Unity, or Iron Source. And NativeX, they were logging into all these different platforms from different tabs and browsers that they realized that they needed to create a tool to increase workflow efficiencies and decrease time spent on creative, I'm sorry, on campaign uh, uh, creation as well as uh, campaign management and optimization. And so it was so powerful, it increased workflow efficiencies, decreased time spent, and also increase overall ROI for their advertisers that they then decided to brand this XMP. And this is one of the new SaaS platforms that we are offering to the market. Now, as an app developer is really honing in on their UA strategy, to have a comprehensive UA strategy means having a great creative strategy. And Mob Vista offers help for app developers from both a managed service and self-service perspective. We have an in-house creative agency by the name of MindWorks which helps app developers with both the strategic as well as tactical implementation of playable creatives. And very similar to XMP for NativeX, that team, the MindWorks team, created a playable platform by the name of Play Turbo that allows the ability to create playable ads at scale in less than 15 minutes time. And last, as we go through that user journey or that app developer journey, the next thing, they're growing so big that they could be spending millions per year or even millions per month on cloud costs through AWS or Google Cloud. We've created a cloud cost optimization platform by the name of SpotMax, which really allows the optimization of what the overall cloud cost spend is for app developers. Well, wow, that's impressive. It's not like every time on the show, I get a chance to talk to somebody who has the umbrella company for a bunch of these subdivisions. Yeah, that's the big introduction, but it obviously does cover the whole gamut of services you guys provide. Now, let's cover the entire landscape of ad formats we have right now. So starting from this point, what formats are available right now for developers to use? And what of these are the most popular? Uh, certainly. Um, in the, in the ever-evolving world of mobile in-app advertising, Understanding the role and effectiveness of various ad formats is really key. With banner ads, while they are one of the oldest formats, their unobtrusive nature still makes them suitable for certain campaigns, though their effectiveness can be limited compared to more engaging formats. Interstitial ads are widely used, especially in apps, where there are clear breaks in user engagement. Their full screen prominence can be a double-edged sword though, providing both visibility 
but potentially disrupting user experience if not implemented thoughtfully. Native ads represent a sophisticated approach to blending advertising content within the natural flow of an app's interface. Their growth signifies a shift towards less intrusive advertising, really focusing on contextual relevance. Video ads have become an ideal medium for storytelling and building engagement across various types of ads excuse me, across various types of apps, both gaming and non-gaming. Unlike other ad formats that might emphasize immediate impressions or clicks, video ads create a more profound connection by allowing developers and marketers to craft narratives that really resonate with potential users. By visually showcasing an app's features or functionality or the excitement of a game's environment, they really go beyond mere promotion to engage the viewer's curiosity and interest. And the power of video really lies in the ability to tell a story, whether it's the adventure within the game, the solution offered by a utility app, or the community created by a social platform. This alignment of content with user interest creates a compelling reason for users to explore further, making video ads a versatile and effective tool in user acquisition across a wide spectrum of applications. And then there's playable ads. Playable ads are perhaps the epitome of interactive advertising, especially prevalent in the gaming industry. This try before you buy model really offers potential users a taste of the actual product. Playable ads are not merely a promotional tool. They're a user acquisition strategy in themselves. Their design and integration requires a deep understanding of user behavior, game mechanics, and conversion optimization. Yeah, so that's the whole gamut of uh, uh, ad formats uh, developers have in their disposal when it comes to running advertising campaigns. Now, let's talk about the playable ad formats a little bit more. So what is the the, the book definition uh, for playable ad? What are the benefits of using it? Uh, probably some examples. And if you look at the playable ad format, what at categories are applicable. So like the first thing that comes to mind, obviously are games, but what about other categories? Sure thing. A playable ad format, as the name suggests, offers an interactive snippet of a game or an app, allowing users to engage with it directly within the ad. It's been a revolutionary approach to advertising that's truly built on user interaction. Now the benefits of using playables ads are numerous. First, they, in, they really enable users or potential users to try before they buy, creating that immediate connection with the app. They also allow advertisers to gather detailed metrics on how users interact with the ad, offering invaluable insights for iteration and optimization, which is key in today's UA landscape. Ultimately, by providing a taste of the actual experience, they can increase the likelihood of download and retention. Now, playable ads are most commonly associated with mobile gaming, where they've had significant success, including for Mintegral's in-house creative studio, Mindworks, and our playable production platform, PlayTurbo. For example, PlayTurbo's playable ad tool helped Lilith Games double its conversion rate for its game, AFK Arena. We've helped some of the world's largest developers, including the likes of Voodoo, gain more traction and users for their games with playable ads. Now the application of playable ads extends beyond games. They can be tailored for other app categories as well, such as educational apps, where a playable ad might provide a mini lesson or a quiz, or utility apps might use them to demonstrate a particular feature or function. The key to success with playable ads, whether it's in gaming or other app categories, lies in creating a truly authentic and engaging experience that reflects the core value of the app. By doing so, they not only attract the user's attention, but they provide a meaningful interaction that can significantly enhance conversion and user satisfaction. In a competitive marketplace, playable ads stand out as a creative and effective approach to user acquisition as well as engagement. Yeah, I can personally testify that uh, on the landscape of all advertising options, when I see a playable ad, it does invite me to interact with it. It's it's fun, it's interesting, it gives me 
a bit of information, uh, give me an impression of what the app or uh, game is about. So it's kind of a lowering this bar of uh, my like my willingness to interact with the app or game, uh, which can be pretty high when I'm looking at the regular ad, which, you know, to this day, I've seen so many that it's uh, they're they're kind of blending this this phenomenon of uh, ad blending is is real so when it's interactive when it's you're looking at the game and you get a chance to try it out before without paying a dime uh, that's that's really encouraging it's really engaging uh for me personally and i think for many people that's that's why it's so popular well actually interestingly you know one, one little factoid here as well to kind of add on to that um a lot of app developers are still trying to learn if playable ads are going to be right for them. And, and, you know, one factoid I like to, to share is that over 70% of installs on Mintegral are from a playable ad. And so they're really, really compelling. And, and it, it for me, that would be a best practice for what type of ad format to use going, going forward. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. It's 70%. Now, I just cannot miss this question because we're all living in this age of chat DPT and it's all over. So when you look at the generative AI and its potential for helping app marketers to advertise their games and apps, so is it actually capable of helping developers with creating a playable ad? Or it's on the horizon, do you see any examples like, are, what is the potential of generative AI for playable ads? Oh, it, it, it definitely, it, it's massive. Uh, we've actively embraced major breakthroughs brought about by generative AI technology, and we can definitely foresee the eventual uh, product transformations. Now, regarding the entire research and development process, we've chosen assisted or automated production of advertising materials as the starting point, focusing on AI generated images and image processing. Some of these features have been implemented in that Play Turbo uh, automated creative production tool I mentioned previously. Furthermore, Mavista is building a new service that we're calling Marketing Copilot. It's based on LLM and AIGC, which is expected to assist clients in quickly creating appealing ad creatives, implementing effective ad campaigns, and continuously optimizing and improving them based on historical data and performance analysis. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I can see Copilot is the notion in so many places. Starting the Microsoft Office has a Copilot. When you actually check the interface in Zoom right now, you will see uh, AI Copilot uh, tool right here in the Zoom uh, application. So it is a great concept to help, uh, in this case, help, uh, advertisers and marketers to have uh, the power of generative AI in their fingertips. What are the best practices of using playable ads? Uh, let's cover probably what the mistakes are being made quite often when it comes to playable ads. Now, playable ads are, uh, they're an innovative and highly engaging ad format, but their success really relies on adherence to specific best practices and a clear understanding of those potential pitfalls. Starting with clear instructions and guidance. A common mistake is assuming users will understand the gameplay instantly. It's crucial to guide the user through the experience, simplify the gameplay, and provide obvious goals. Some strategies, like starting with you know, fake advice that leads to failure, it can be counterintuitive, but effective in helping players understand the gameplay and increase conversion rates. Setting goals. Make sure that the audience knows how to win from the beginning. That's essential. Providing a clear goal enhances understanding as well as engagement. Positive feedback. Quickly giving viewers a sense of achievement through high scores or goals achieved creates that rewarding experience that motivates them to download the app. Utilize engaging content. For familiar games, incorporating engaging elements like a short intro movie to show the storyline can really captivate users. Customizable templates. Leveraging tools like Play Turbo, which allows for granular customization of playables, it speeds up production time and offers element level iterations. As an example of this approach, it can be seen in the project for Color Bump 3D, where even small iterations had substantial impacts on IVR. 
Element level optimization. Creating fresh playable ads is valuable, but small changes to existing elements like characters, ad duration, and music can often be the best way forward when time or budget constraints exist. Dynamic creative optimization, or DCO. This technology, now being integrated with playable ads through platforms like PlayTurbo, allow advertisers to optimize creatives around multiple variables in real time, extending a capability previously associated mainly with banner ads and video ads. And what often gets wrong is the underestimation, uh, sorry, excuse me, the underestimation of the complexity of crafting a playable ad that is both engaging and reflective of the actual game or app experience. It's not merely about creating a playable snippet, but about encapsulating the essence of the app in a way that resonates with the potential user. Mistakes in this area can lead to a disconnect between the ad experience and the actual app, potentially leading to lower conversion and lower retention rates. Got you. All right, this is a really uh, great suggestions for people to be aware of the issues they may have with playable ads. And you have to remember about time constraints. You are not, you don't have a chance to expose the, the whole gameplay to your audience. There you have this limited to short chunk of time when you need to deliver the gameplay in a way that people can get it in this five, seven, 10 seconds. So they can understand what's the value and make a decision if that game for them or not. Now, Greg, uh, looking back at your years in tech, more than 20 years, what would you like to change about the tech the most? Let's see. What would I like? Well, I, I think if I would go back to 2007, I would I'd probably go back a couple of years and invent the iPhone myself. <laughs> um, actually, there's not there's nothing I would I would necessarily change. Um, the technology is evolving at at an exponential rate, and and the one of the ways that I always think about this is that tech either increases the speed of communication or increases the speed of just getting things done, and so. That acceleration is still happening today, and it's going to continue to happen through through the the likes of generative AI. So there's nothing I would actually change at all. Gotcha. Okay, uh, we're transitioning from first one to the second one, where I take a quick chance to let my audience know every guest who come on this show a little bit better by asking just a few quick questions. Here we go. So, uh, what smartphone do you have now? Are you been switching between these two giants, iOS and Android, or just staying one side all the time? So the phone I have now is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, I, I'm still holding out for the release of the 15. Um, and while I've used Android for testing uh, purposes, you know, throughout my career, uh, I've never actually owned one. I, I, I truly require those blue text messages to come in. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, you're in my chem. <laughs> um, <laughs> What was your first mobile phone, you know, before the year of the iPhone, before 2007? What was the oh, we, smartphone you were using back, back then? Sorry, uh, uh, mobile phone, not smartphone. Yeah, we'd have to go back. We'd have to go back about 25 years. I think my first uh, mobile phone was the the Motorola StarTac, which is like, I think that's the 96, 97, 98 time frame. Yeah, I cannot even relate back, back then because I had no idea what the smartphone is about in those days. Now... Uh, back to present. So imagine you've left your uh, iPhone 13 Max at home. Uh, what would be the most missing feature for you when you're out? You know, believe it or not, it would actually be some of the, the basic functionality, you know, texting, phone calls, maps. You know, I'm a father of two, so I always want to be available to them. And I also take care of my mother and talk to her daily. Um, on top of that, I'm an avid user of Waze, and, and I use that even if I, I know how to get somewhere. So I mm -hmm. wouldn't want to be without some of that basic functionality. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, this is, I love uh, using Waze. Even when I'm not driving and on the bus, it's still helpful to get around and see. What about the traffic up there? Are we going to stuck there or not? <laughs> All things are going on the roads around me. When you look at your iPhone 13 Pro Max, you may wonder, wouldn't it be great if this thing can do this or that? Some feature that probably not there or there, but it's not developed as much as you would like to. Could be hardware, software, anything that will make this smartphone a better device for you. 
I, I'm truly most fascinated with the possibilities of generative AI. There are many apps today that are integrating with, you know, chat GBT. And I truly think we've just started to scratch the surface of what's really possible possible um, from a generative AI perspective. Great, great. Before I let you go, very, very final question. How can people get in touch with you and get more information about what you do? Um, I'd say the easiest ways to get in touch with me are, are you know, the probably both email and LinkedIn. My email is pretty simple. It's it's greg.castro at mobvista.com. And my LinkedIn profile, you know, if you if you follow the normal convention of a LinkedIn profile URL, the last part of mine is, you know, forward slash Greg Castro. Got you. Great. Thank you for your time and spending this 30 minutes or so with us. Thank you, Greg. Bye bye. Thank you. And that was Greg Castro, VP Global Partnerships at Mob Vista. To listen to more episodes, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. Just search for Business of Apps. You will find us easily. Remember, we're this episodes on Mondays. So subscribe. And you will be able to get new episodes on your smartphone, tablet, or computer as soon as we release them. And please don't forget to leave us a review or comment on iTunes. It is highly appreciated. And all episodes will also be available on businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.